Would you like an inside look at what it's like purchasing from General RV? Listen, if you're currently purchasing or thinking about purchasing from General RV, then you're gonna appreciate this video. What's going on guys, Matt here with RCRV, and I'm gonna give you an inside look at our experience purchasing with General RV. Now, if you're anything like me, I value experience over knowledge. Now, you get a lot of great information from someone who is knowledgeable about the purchasing process, but how much more valuable is it to get someone's honest first-hand experience? If you're new to our channel, RCRV is a group of part-time RVers with full-time jobs showing you just how much fun you can have even if you're part-time. Now we're gonna do a bit of a different style video. Typically we'll do travel and camping videos along with RV upgrades and modifications and recommendations. But in this video, I wanna give you the honest behind the scenes information of our experience with General RV. So let's jump right into the who, what, when, where, how, and why. We purchased our new Alliance Paradigm 390 MP in February of 21, which was about two months ago as of this recording. Our salesman was Gustavo, and I'll leave all his information in the video description below. We purchased our rig from the Ocala, Florida location. Now, General RV is a massive dealership with locations all over the country. So what you need to understand is that Aside from some branding and processes, each location will have its own feel and vibe. So for the purposes of this video, we will solely be talking about the Ocala, Florida location. So that covers the basics, who, what, when, and where. Now, I'd like to spend a little bit of time unpacking the how. How did they treat us? How did our experience go? And lastly, I would like to end with the why. Why do we end up going with General RV? Why do we trade in both our old RV and our boat? Actually, that could go into the how column also, but we'll get into that in a second. Now let's address the YouTube thing, because I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, you're YouTubers. They probably treated you different because they know you're YouTubers. Two points to that. One, we didn't tell anybody at the dealership that we were YouTubers. In fact, if you watch our purchase video, all of our video clips are either outside in the parking lot or actually inside the new RV. So nobody really knew. Number two and probably most notable is we're still a fairly new and growing YouTube channel. We don't yet have the reach or influence to really get any major company to care what we think. So by all accounts to General RV, we were the normal everyday customers. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump back into the how. And to do that, I need to give you an abbreviated storyline from the first day we stepped into General RV until our purchase date. Back in November, we were driving through Ocala on our way to Tampa to spend Thanksgiving with my mother. We decided to make a quick stop at General RV. Now we had seen the Alliance Paradigms on video, but we hadn't had a chance to actually step foot in one physically, and more specifically, the 390 MP. We got there Wednesday night, about 30 minutes before they were getting ready to close for the holiday. This was my first impression of General RV. While waiting at the front desk for them to find a salesman that could help us, I was chit-chatting with the ladies behind the desk, asking them questions such as how they liked working there, how they treated them, things along that line. And they were telling me that they really love working there. They said they felt like a big family and that the dealership really cares about them. Comically, they said that the hardest part of working there was if you're trying to lose weight. Apparently, the dealership had just provided food for the employees for Thanksgiving and often surprises them with biscuits or donuts. Now, you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with purchasing an RV? Well, more than you think. I spent 18 years in retail. I used to be a store manager for a Walmart Supercenter. And it's there that I learned that if you want to improve your facility's customer service, the best way to do that is to focus on and improve your employee engagement. Think about it. 
If you have unhappy or unengaged employees, how can you expect them to be happy and go out of their way to help customers? This little five minute impromptu chat with the staff at the front desk told me more about the dealership and how I could expect to be treated than I could have ever found out otherwise. Now it was at this time that we met our salesman Gustavo who informed us that they did not have a 390 MP on the lot at that time for us to look at, but they did have one on order. It was supposed to be delivered soon. So we exchanged information and we went on our way to Tampa for Thanksgiving. Now fast forward to Saturday. We did find a dealership in Tampa that had a 390 MP on the lot for us to look at. Now we're gonna leave this dealership unnamed because as you'll hear, things didn't go so smoothly. So for now, we'll just call them the one big dealership. So anyways, we drove to the one big dealership and we got to see an Alliance 390 for the first time and as expected, we fell in love with it. We talked to the salesman, we asked him to write up some numbers. It's here I should tell you that in order for us to financially make a new RV work, we had to trade in not only our old RV, but also our boat. Now I'll explain more about the boat when I get to the why, but as for the how, we had to cut monthly payments somewhere in our budget in order to jump from our travel trailer to an Alliance fifth wheel. So for the sake of time, this is where I'm going to speed up the story a little bit. Just know that every dealership that we dealt with and every quote that we received was all under this same structure. How much would we get for the trade-in of our old RV? How much would we get for our boat? And the price of the new RV. So over the next few weeks, working via phone and email, we received deals from several dealerships, including General RV. The first quote we got from General RV was on par with what we were getting from every other dealership. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that amazing either. I spoke to our salesman Gustavo and I told him that the price was just not amazing enough to push us into getting into a new RV at that moment. Naturally, he asked me, well, how much do you want to spend? And I gave him a price that I knew he couldn't get to, but I felt that was a good place to start negotiations. Eventually, Gustavo came back to me with what we felt was the best price that General could do for us. Now, as you know, RV pricing is all over the board right now. With demand increasing and production delays and shortages, pricing can vary widely. So out of respect to both General RV and Alliance, the manufacturer, I'm not going to discuss the actual price of our deal. I will tell you that with every dealership we dealt with, we negotiated the out the door bottom line price. Thanks to the internet, we knew what a fair trade-in price was for our trade-ins. And thanks to Facebook groups and online forums, we had a fairly good idea of what a fair price was to purchase the new RV. Take those two numbers, add them together, add tax title, possibly some fees. We knew what a good out the door price was that we wanted. Once we got what we felt was the best price that General RV was going to give us, this is where I decided to get the dealerships competing with each other on the price. Now, I am by no means an expert negotiator. I'm actually pretty horrible at it. I read somewhere that this is a great strategy to use to get an even lower price from a dealer, and that may be true, but this completely backfired in my face. For example, I contacted the one big RV dealership in Tampa, and I disclosed the price that General RV had for our deal. I told them that I would really like to give them my business, but that they would have to do better than the price that I had already gotten from another dealer. The salesman told me he would talk to his manager and see what they could do for us. About five minutes later, I get a call from the sales manager. He proceeded to tell me, quite bluntly, that the price they gave me was the absolute best price they could do, thanked me for considering them for my business, and hung up on me. I will say, no other dealership hung up on me, but all their responses were about the same. No one could touch the price that General RV had given us. We did end up reaching back out to General RV to tell them that we wanted to go ahead with the deal. They took a deposit over the phone as we were currently back in Georgia at the time. And then it was just a matter of waiting for the RV to show up and be delivered from the manufacturer. 
Now, you would think getting a great deal would make us happy, but the reality was because no one could touch the price that General RV gave us, I became very skeptical, almost paranoid that there was something nefarious going on. I should add that all our dealings were done remotely. We sent pictures of our trade-in RV. We sent pictures of our boat along with all the information for both. So in essence, the quotes for our trades were sight unseen. So once the RV arrived, we filled out a credit app online, got approved for terms that were actually better than what we were expecting and made plans to travel down to Ocala to pick it up. Happily ever after, right? Well, sort of. A week or so before our trip, Gustavo calls me and asks me if I had a fifth wheel hitch. Now, coming from a travel trailer, I did know that I needed a new hitch. I had one in line that I was supposed to buy, but as of that time, I had not. He said he would talk to his manager and see if he could get one thrown into the deal. He called me a few minutes later and told me that yes, indeed, they would add a fifth wheel hitch to our deal. And while that was great, it just added to my skepticism and paranoia. In fact, I made him repeat over the phone that this would not change our bottom line price whatsoever. Gustavo put my fear to rest and did affirm that they were throwing this in as part of the deal. So the day comes, we get to Ocala to do the trade. Now they have us do the walkthrough first so that they would have time to fix any issues that we found while we were doing the paperwork. We did find some issues, uh, normal shakedown issues in an RV, and they were amazing about getting them addressed and fixed. Once we get inside to do the paperwork, the finance manager informs me that they were actually able to get a better finance rate than what they had originally told us. And I'm talking like over half a percent. Once we finished the paperwork, the RV was still wrapping up with the PDI repairs that they were doing. Everybody was apologetic that we had to wait. They asked us to go out to lunch and told us that by the time we came back, the RV should be ready. So we went out to lunch, came back, still wasn't quite ready. We got more apologies. And then Gustavo tells me that they're going to throw in another $300 credit for the RV store that's in the dealership because they felt bad that we had to wait for the repairs. This is how we got our snap pads for all six stabilizers and a few other items for the RV. I say all this to paint a picture for you of how we went into the deal and what kind of mindset we were in. Normally, if someone's on the fence about a deal, that's when the dealership will throw in a free hitch or a store credit. We weren't on the fence. We had already accepted the deal. They gave us a great price that no other dealership could touch and they had our business. And then they went to work for us. They had gotten us an interest rate that we were okay with and had already accepted. They were under no obligation to keep working after the fact and get us an even better rate, but they did. We already had a hitch lined up that we were going to buy. They were not obligated to give us a hitch, especially since I hadn't even asked for one. But they did. I went into this deal at every turn waiting for the hammer to drop. But it never did. Now I know that every sale will be different, every salesman will be different, every dealership will be different. And like you, before our deal, I went online to look up reviews about General RV and I found a mixed bag of opinions. Now, I'm not trying to diminish anyone else's experience with General RV. All I can do is give you our experience and hope that it helps someone. So guys, in closing, I would like to address the why. Now, this is probably the question I get asked the most about. Why would you trade in a nice RV and a beautiful boat for another RV? And the best way to answer that is to direct you back to our channel. I invite you guys to check out our videos and the amazing memories that we've made. Now, we've always loved camping. In fact, before our first RV, we were tent campers for over a decade. So we love camping and we got the RV to go camping. But once we got the RV, we discovered a new love and that was the love of travel we found ourselves traveling more and more, seeing sites and states in a weekend that would not be possible without an RV. And we found that we were using our boat less and less. In fact, 
The last year that we owned the boat, I believe we only took it out twice that year. And that was because we were rarely home. We were usually on the road. Now, we have amazing memories with the boat and I'll never regret buying it. But our kids are getting older and to be able to share these amazing travel adventures with them while we still have them, to be able to go out and see this beautiful country and show them things that most kids just see on TV, I don't know if there's a word that can describe that feeling. Amazing just doesn't seem to do it justice. So guys, that's my recap of our experience with General RV. I would absolutely recommend them to anybody. It was an amazing experience. They really did go above and beyond and exceeded our expectations. If I've left anything out or if there's something specific you'd like to know that I didn't put in this video, please leave us a comment below and we'll be happy to share that with you. We love engaging with you guys. We love getting to know you. Thanks for watching and we will see you out there.